Hello and uh, welcome to all of you on your own biology channel that's Mother Bear's Biology Color. Dear viewers, today we shall be discussing a very important uh, theory of evolution, rather the most important theory in the evolution or uh, regarding the evolution that's known as the Darwin's theory of the evolution or <coughs> that is known as Darwinism. This theory was put forth by <coughs> Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin put forth this theory and this theory is commonly known as Darwinism. Now we say that regarding the Darwinism, how the Darwin accumulated these ideas which he put forth in the form of a theory, we shall be discussing the background of all those ideas which, <coughs> which Darwin accumulated from different sources and from his research later on. He put forth all of his ideas in the form of a theory which we call as the theory of natural selection. He published this theory of natural selection in his book which was entitled <coughs> as the origin of species by means of natural selection. Now first we, we will uh, try to understand this, that as to how Darwin understood the concepts of the evolution. In 1831, in 1831, British Admiralty arranged a voyage which was to be carried out from 1831 to 1836 and Darwin was selected for this voyage and Darwin during this tenure of his research extensively studied the flora and fauna of many places and mostly he studied the flora and fauna of a particular uh, chain of islands which we call as Galapagos Islands. Galapagos Islands. These Galapagos Islands are so much rich in the flora and fauna that many of the Biologists call these Galapox Islands as the living laboratory of the evolution. It means to say that if you have to understand the evolution, just as you use a laboratory for understanding the basis of the science and for similarly for understanding the main concepts of the evolution, you can go to the Galapox Islands and study the diversity of the flora and fauna and you, <coughs> you can yourself understand the evolution. So, in nutshell, we say that during this voyage, Darwin visited many places and mostly he researched upon the flora and fauna of the Galapagos Islands and where he got the ideas of the evolution. One of the most famous examples you will see in the evolution is the research upon the finches which, were, which was carried out by Darwin during his voyage and these finches were uh, later on named after Darwin as Darwin's finches. Darwin studied the divergent evolution in the uh, uh, Darwin's finches. He saw that these finches also existed on the mainland of the North America but he also found these finches upon the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands is a chain of 13 islands in the sea and what Darwin saw about the finches, which became the basis of understanding the character displacement and the divergent evolution and later on the speciation, he found that the finches are found on all the th uh, 13 islands and they are also found on the mainland of the North America. But what is the difference between these uh, species of the finches is that Upon the mainland of the North America, the finches which he found, they had a particular beak size and a particular beak, beak pattern. And upon all other islands upon which Darwin found these finches, the finches were the same but the only difference was in their beak size and the shape. Now Darwin concluded that basically these all finches use it to reside on the mainland of the North America some millions and billions of years ago. but they have suddenly migrated to the what we call as the Galapagos Islands and 
they have migrated to different Galapagos Islands and once they migrated to these Galapagos Islands, they found a food which was quite different from the food they used to take upon the mainland of the North America. So upon each and every island uh, uh, or upon each and every Galapagos Island, they were faced with different challenges regarding their food. So they got differently adapted with respect to their beak size and shape and the beak size and shape was modified as per the availability of the food present upon a particular Galapagos Island. As the food availability and the type of the food which was present on the Galapagos Islands, it varied from one island to another island, so varied the pattern and the size of beaks which these finches developed upon the different islands. But this doesn't, didn't happen overnight. It took millions and billions of years for these finches to totally diverge from one another and to develop into 13 or 14 different types of the species of finches. And this pattern in which you will see that from the same ancestral stock, many different species have been formed due to the different environmental setups in which the organism was later on uh, what we call as uh, began, began their lives. Uh, this type of the evolution is known as the divergent evolution. And the characters of the beaks with respect to the beak size and the shape which every finch developed differently upon every different Galapagos Island, this pattern of character development <coughs> is known as character displacement. So this was this was not the only thing that Darwin studied uh, upon the Galapagos Islands. He also studied the different fossils by which he also got the different ideas regarding the evolution. But the main work of the Darwin upon the Galapagos Islands was on Darwin's finches by which he got a clear understanding of as to how the evolution works and as to how the evolution proceeds. And after that, we will see that parallel to the research of the Charles Darwin, one another great scientist that is the Alpha Drusel Wallace was working upon Malaya Archipelago and he was working on the flora and fauna of the Malaya Archipelago. The Malaya Archipelago falls in the modern Indonesia. So <laughs> it was A.R. Wallis. A.R. means Alfred Russell Wallace, another very big name associated with the evolution. He was studying the flora and fauna upon the Malaya Archipelago and he found uh, that there are many clear indications and evidences of evolution upon the Malaya archipelago. Once he <laughs> gathered the information, he wrote a research paper entitled On the Tendencies of Varieties to Depart Indefinitely from Their Original Type. This was the title of the research paper. And after drafting the research paper, he sent the research paper to the Charles Darwin for critical review. Once Charles Darwin received this paper from the Wallace, he found that the Wallace's observations are quite similar to that of the uh, Darwin's ideas and Darwin's findings upon the Galapagos Islands. The only difference is that Wallace worked upon the Malaya Archipelago, whereas the Darwin worked upon the Galapagos Islands. But the ideas the Wallace have, had found are the same what have I worked out by the Darwin. So this strengthened the idea of the Darwin and this strengthened the concepts of the evolution. Later on, later on during the same period, there was a famous uh, demographist that is Thomas Robert Malthus, which we, whom we simply call as T.R. Malthus. T.R. Malthus. During this period, T.R. Malthus put forth his theory, which is commonly known as Malthusian theory. He wrote a research paper entitled On the Principles of Population. In this paper, he explained that there is a great uh, imbalance, imbalance, uh, sorry, there is a great imbal imbalance regarding the food production and the food consumption. In his research paper, he wrote that whereas the food increases in the arithmetic ratio, the populations tend to increase in the geometric ratio. 
it means that the food increases in a linear fashion whereas the population is double at every given stage by studying this paper the darwin found and he got the ideas that as there are limitations of the food in space there is a lot of competition among the members of a species for their food space and many other factors and he found uh, later on that competition is a man factor in the evol evolution or it's a man factor uh, man uh, fa evolving factor or man factor regarding the evolution of any given species so this was the general background and this was the general summary as to how the darwin accumulated the ideas uh, by combining his research and that of the alfred russell wallace and that of the uh, Th uh, thomas robert malthus he gathered the whole information and later on he put forth a very famous theory which we call as the darwin's theory of natural selection this theory was published in his book entitled on the origin of species <coughs> <coughs> by means of natural selection now we shall discuss about the different uh, points which were discussed in the darwin's theory the darwin's theory rests upon many points and the points <coughs> in the sequence are as the first point is the overproduction or enormous fertility or prodigality this is the first point in the darwin's theory so the first point is enormous production or what we call as overproduction or enormous fertility or prodigality now what we mean by this darwin said that every living species has an innate tendency to produce the organisms of its own type by reproduction but every organism produces the organisms of its own type more than that can actually survive this is known as overproduction <coughs> in simple terms we say <coughs> that the organisms overproduce their own generation or they produce more number of offspring than could possibly survive for example we will simply give an example if we see the cod fishes which are in the uh, residing in the waters of the atlantic ocean the cod fishes which are present in the atlantic ocean and at the rate at which they are laying the eggs if all the eggs develop develop into the cod fishes then we will see that there will be no space for the uh, cod fishes there there will be no space for the water in the atlantic ocean so will be the number of the cod fishes but this actually doesn't happen similarly you will see a rabbit gives what we call as uh, a rabbit uh, produces about 24 children or 24 offspring per year uh, but all of them do not survive similarly you will see a plant that's capsula capsula bursa pastoris this plant when we see <laughs> the number of seeds produced and dispersed by this plant if we believe that all the seeds will develop into the uh, capsula bursa pastoris then you will see the whole land may have been covered by the capsula but this has never happened similarly if you see the rate of reproduction in the paramecia then you will see that uh, the paramecia might have been present in very large amounts upon this earth which is not the reality so what happens basically is that every living species has an innate tendency to produce organisms of its own kind in such a quantity or in such a such such abundance that could not possibly survive this is simply what we call as overproduction or what we call as prodigality or enormous fertility 
Now, in the second point, that is the competition, we shall discuss why all of these organisms do not survive, or why all the seeds uh, released uh, are dispersed from any given plant, or for example, capsula, they are not viable, or they do not develop, or even if they de develop, then all do not attain the adulthood. So the second part in the Darwin story is the competition. Now this idea of the competition Darwin basically got from <coughs> uh, studying the Malthus's ideas which he uh, put forth in his uh, research paper entitled on the, uh, on the principles of the populations. Now Darwin found that basically there are limitations of the food space and other environmental factors that is why the organisms need to compete with one another to find the food, to find a mate for reproduction and uh, to find a particular space to live in or to find a particular territory to live in and these things will not be allotted to any organism free of cost for uh, getting the food, for getting the space, for getting the shelter, for getting a mate the organism has to go through a competition and if the organism emerges out to be successful in the competition then he will uh, what we call as avail the facilities if he is not unable to what we call as <laughs> fight in the competition or if he is not the stronger one then he will be eliminated this is what we call as competition so for maintaining an equilibrium as there are always limitations of food space and mates there is necessarily uh, there is necessary necessity of the competition now the competition is threefold the first type of the <coughs> competition is the intra specific competition This is the first type of the competition, intraspecific competition. We also call it as intranessine competition. Intraspecific competition is a competition which occurs between two individuals of the same species. For example, two dogs fighting for a piece of meat, it is a type of intraspecific competition. This is the most severe type of the competition because the needs of the organisms belonging to the same species, they are always the same. One very important example over here in intraspecific competition is cannibalism. Cannibalism. Now, what is cannibalism? Cannibalism is basically such a phenomena in which an organism feeds upon or eats another organism of the same species. This is known as cannibalism. And one who practices the cannibalism is known as a cannibal. This cannibalism is a type of intraspecific competition. As already said, that intraspecific competition is the most severe type of competition as the needs of the organisms belong to the same species are always the same. This cannibalism you can see in uh, these uh, some snacks, some larger snacks eat smaller snacks of their own species and this is known as cannibalism. Sometimes you are asked in meat examination, cannibalism is a type of, the options may be intraspecific competition, interspecific competition, extraspecific competition. You have to correctly choose the correct answer that is the intraspecific competition. So cannibalism is a type of intraspecific competition. The intraspecific competition is also known as intranessine competition. Now we shall move on towards the second type of the competition, which is the, which is what we call as the interspecific competition. So we are discussing the second point of the Darwin story, that's the competition. So the first type of competition we discussed it, it is intraspecific competition. Now we will be discussing the second type, second type of competition, it is the interspecific or internecine competition. Now what is internecine or interspecific competition? Interspecific competition is a competition between two or more than two individuals belonging to different species. For example, we are saying competition between a lion and a tiger. Competition between a lion and a tiger for 
uh, finding the food or for finding the prey it is interspecific competition competition between a dog and a cat for finding the food it is interspecific competition now you should keep in mind that the competition always doesn't uh, occur only for food it occurs for food for finding space for finding mate and for money uh, other uh, things so the second type of competition is interspecific competition it simply means when two or more than two organisms compete with one another but those uh, for a particular thing but those organisms belong to different species then there is third type of the competition which we call as the extra specific competition extra specific competition Now, when an organism faces competition with its environment, it is known as extra specific competition. For example, if earthquakes occur, some organisms will survive, some will not survive. There is competition with the environment. If floods occur, if some epidemic occurs, if some disease uh, outbreaks, uh, these factors are the uh, what we call as uh, these are the environmental factors with which an organism has to fight in order to survive. So once an organism fights with the environment or once an organism competes uh, with the environmental factors, uh, we say that this type of competition is known as the extra specific competition. Whatever the type of competition, either it is intraspecific, interspecific or extra specific, but in the competition, always one who survives or one who emerges out to be successful is the fittest, which we call as the uh, survival of the fittest. Now, there is the third point in the theory of the Darwin and the third point is the variation and hereditary. The third point is variation and hereditary. Now Darwin had to explain why some of the organisms survive in the competition whereas others are eliminated. Darwin believed that those organisms which emerged successful in the competition, they had useful variations. And those organisms which were eliminated from the competition, they had harmful variations. So, in nutshell, we say that organisms which had useful variations, useful variations are those variations which help an organism to survive in particular conditions. Uh, so those organisms have useful variations will survive and those organisms which do not have useful variations will perish in the competition. So this will bring a balance between the food uh, and the populations, between the space and the populations, between the mates and the uh, what we call as the uh, between the uh, mates and uh, the uh, sex ratio. Sorry, uh, it will also maintain the sex ratio. The competition will also maintain the sex ratio. So now those organisms which uh, emerge out successful emerge out as successful in the competition, they will only pass their characters to the next generation. And this transmission of the useful variations from generation to generation is what we call as the hereditary. So this is the third point in the Darwin story that Darwin believes that only those organisms will survive which have useful variations, and they will pass on these useful variations to the next generation. And after that. There is fourth point in Darwin's theory, and this fourth point is the natural selection. Natural selection, or it is natural selection, or the survival of the fittest. This statement, natural selection, was given by Darwin, whereas this. This dictum that is survival of the fittest was given by Herbert Spencer. Both convey the same meanings. Now, what is natural selection or what is the survival of the fittest? As you see, nature always prefers those organisms which are the strongest, uh, which emerge out as successful in the competition of whatever type it may be. And this is known as the natural selection. So nature will always select those organisms which have useful variations 
which make them to survive in particular conditions. This is known as natural selection or this is known as the survival of the fittest. So those organisms which are fit for the environment, they will survive and those which are not fit for the environment, they will perish. This is what we call as the uh, natural selection or the survival of the fittest. After that, then there is the last point in the Darwin story which we call as speciation. Speciation. Speciation is the last point in the Darwin story. Now, those organisms which are fit for the environment, they will survive and they will have useful variations and they will pass on these useful variations to the next generations. Over the course of millions and billions of years, this load, uh, this uh, uh, load of this load of variations will accumulate or the uh, accumulation uh, accumulation of variation will occur variations will accumulate over generations and generations and a time will come when a new species will arise from the existing species means a species which has undergone what we call as uh, which has uh, which has accumulated variations over the course of millions and billions of years will give rise to a totally different and new species and this is what Darwin called as speciation. So these are the main points in the Darwin story. So again we shall repeat that the first point in the Darwin story is overproduction. The second one is the competition which is of three types intraspecific, interspecific, extraspecific. The third point is hereditary uh, variation and hereditary. The fourth point is the survival of the fittest or the natural selection and the fifth point is the speciation. Hope that you have understood uh, the concept very well. For more lectures, you can subscribe to your own channel. That's Mother Biology Biology Color. Thank you.